I'm not sure how to love someone like you. How can you so great and holy we see the worship of someone like me? All I have seems significant and small, but I freely give it all to you.
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a good praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, team. Thank you, team. Welcome to Dove Church. We thank God for another opportunity to brag on Jesus. And we thank you for looking in on us and for sharing with us, sending your support. And we ask that you hit the like and subscribe button as you receive these messages. We thank God for, for some new people that came on board and you let us know that you were listening. And we hope that each message will become a blessing to your life, something that you can just take and give portability to and apply to your lives. And we thank God for what he freely gives to us. We freely share with you. Amen. Amen. You are his and he loves you and he wants the best for you. And so as you pray for us, we'll deliver up the best to you. And we thank God for that. And we thank God for the victory we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're praying for members that lost family members. And we're praying for friends that lost family members during this, during this time. Uh, uh, there was Sister Kim Hyde. Her mother went into the presence of the Lord. Her funeral was yesterday. And we thank God uh, for a life well spent. She loved the Lord. She loved her church. And so we pray for that family. Amen. Amen. And again, for the Shalom Temple with the, with the burial uh, of Mother uh, Stacks. And uh, we just thank God for, for people of God and, and women of God who have blazed the trail. And so uh, Shalom Temple and church and, and city, we pray for you during this time. And we trust God, you know. But I believe in the word that says absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's all right to be absent. But it's better to be present. Amen. 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 You ready for the word? Amen. Amen. Everybody, as usual, get your Bibles in your hand. Everybody should have their Bible. And then, then the words aren't going to come up to, today, so you will have to look them up. You'll get the reference, but we need to make sure we understand how to use this. Amen. Everybody repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word. We praise you. Holy Spirit, take us to all the places that in the mind of God for this lesson time. And we rebuke everything that's on assignment, even in our imagination, to stop us from receiving today. We thank you that we will have perched hearing, that we will hear sharply and hear correctly, and that we will be able to, to just, just take this word in, and it will do its work in our hearts. And we thank you for it, God, and we bless you for it. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk from the subject, right side up. Right side up. Just in case you upside down, we're going to be right side up today. Right side up. Again, we're going to return to Paul and his missionary journey. And today's lesson takes us to other cities that he went to minister in, he and Silas. And so we find Paul traveling to Philippi, from Philippi, and is now in Thessalonica. Everybody say that, Thessalonica. Sometimes people say Thessalonica, but it's Thessalonica. In this city, 
as with previous visits to other cities such as Pisidian, Iconium, and Lystra, there was mob violence. Everywhere Paul went, he turned stuff upside down. He turned stuff upside down. He caused a ruckus. But in causing a ruckus, he endured some of the pain of the ruckus because he got beat, jailed, run out of town, some of everything happened. But it didn't stop him from going to the next city and causing the same ruckus. Because it doesn't matter what happened to you if you're mission-minded, if you've been called to do something, you do at great peril to your own life sometimes. You just, you, you got to get the job done. And some people say it's just par for the course. That means this is what happens when I show up. And he wasn't shy about that. Usually, there was a disgruntled Jewish faction that would stir up the people against Paul and Silas. Our scripture lesson finds this same situation happening in Thessalonica. Another group getting stirred up because of what Paul is preaching. And he's preaching Jesus the Christ, the King of Kings. And he preached it with Caesar on the throne in Rome. When you call to do something, you do it no matter what. Don't ever say you call, but you only call sometime. You call to do it. Amen. As much as I wanted to lay in the bed today and just stay home, I thank God for a wonderful wife. She didn't lay there with me. She got on up and started cooking breakfast. And, and, and all she did was me. She didn't ask me, how you feeling? You up? She said, breakfast is ready. That means get it downstairs. <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm saying? See, and people around you have to understand your call. Because if they know that God called you to do something, they won't let you off the hook either. Because we excuse people too much. We let them off the hook when you ought to be charging them with their call. You've been called to do this. That's what you said. You've been called to do this. So I'm going to help you make sure you keep your call. Do you understand what I'm saying? And see, we think our situation that arise in the middle of living life and the middle of doing our ministry trumps what God calls us to do. It does not. If you had a choice, you need to push some things to the side to do what God called you to do. There is no other place I need to be than here preaching on Sunday morning. I don't care what's happening. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nobody else is nearly as important as what God called me to do. Did you hear me? Amen. And we think every excuse is something that trumps what God called us to operate in. It is not so. Because when you really need God, you don't want him to say, you know, hold on. I got about five other requests before yours. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, wait, wait a minute. God's busy right now. You just get a number and get in line. I'll take care of you in a minute. How many would that not be good for? Because when you call them, you want them to come win. So why is it good for you to call him right now and he show up and he can't call you and you stay up? Well, let's go to our scripture. Acts 17, 5 through 8. And then we're going to give you some more. We're going to hang out here. Acts 17, 5 through 8. When you have it, say amen. Not enough of you said Amen.
It sure helps when the word's not up there, don't it? <laughs> Boy, that helped, didn't it? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Acts 17, 5 through 8. Does your Bible start out with the word but? Yeah. Amen. But the Jews who were not persuaded. That's a good one to start off with. But the Jews who were not persuaded. Becoming envious. Everybody say becoming envious. Amen. Took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city crying out, these who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them. These are all acting contrary to the degrees, to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So far the reading. So in that verse, we heard several key words. The Jews were not persuaded. They became envious. And then they took some of the evil men to their cause. Wow. Paul was opposed by a mob incitement by envious people. This mob was agitated by the Jewish faction in the city. We just said that another way. Our scripture identifies what the source of the problem is. The Jews were envious of Paul and Silas. They got upset. They got upset because they could do something with the people that they couldn't do. And when you find people that get upset because you have a gifting or you can do something that they can't do, they become envious. And that's what happened. Becoming envious. But for a minute, I had to just segue and talk about what envy is. What is envy? Well, first thing, envy is addressed in the last of the Ten Commandments given by Moses. You don't see the word envy. You see another word that's identical to it. And it says, thou shall not covet. So the word covet encases envy and jealousy and somebody that wants to take something from you. Envy. Envy is wanting what someone else has to the point that you want to take it or worse still, destroy the person that has it. It's like the kid on the playground that sees another kid with some great shoes on and they say it. And they're jealous of the shoes, so I'll just take them. Or worse still, I'll take them and destroy them. That's what envy is all about. Now, the fruit of envy is usually active in persons through behavior. Behavior. Here is one of the demeaning statements that, that, that envious people do. When you get blessed with something, they have to be your morality police. And they start telling you, now don't get the big head. Well, what they're saying is, I'm jealous that you got it. Why are you worried about my head now? When I was broke, you wasn't worried about it. You didn't tell me, don't get the big head while you broke. But get something, and people have to bring you down a notch. 
have to level out. Now, don't get beside yourself. Don't start thinking you all of that. Well, it's too late. I know I'm all that. I'm blessed. Come on. Stop denying what you are and who you are and what God has given you and what he's blessed you with. I don't deny it. I'm blessed. Why would I be ashamed of that? And I'm not going to let you try to level me because you're having a problem. Really, it's your problem. Come on. Sometimes you just have to get people up off of you. That's, that's your problem. Don't regulate me with what you think I ought to be regulated. Don't get the big head. When they say that, you, you should say, too late, it's blowing up. It's too late. I can't hardly keep this shirt on. Come on. Anybody ever gone through that with people? You get blessed. They can't say nothing good. Or either if they say something, you know, I know somebody else that got a car like that. That thing wasn't nothing. Everybody got one has trouble with it. <laughs> well, I'm not going to have trouble with mine. And you'll see it next year and the year after that or until God replaces it with something else. Then I'll be driving something else that you'll say, everybody have trouble with them cars. Does that make sense? Envy, you have to be careful of. Envy is, is subtle. It is subtle. Envy is not a minor vice. The root of envy is a sense of inferiority. You feel inferior to the person that has something. But the Bible comes against that attitude and tells you rejoice with them who are rejoicing. You ought to get happy when somebody gets blessed. When you roll up and tell me, Pastor, I just got a new car, I don't say, so? I get happy for you because, first of all, you're my kids, and I want you to get the best. I want you to be blessed. I don't want your stuff to be raggedy and tore up all the time. I don't want you to be down on something all the time. I want to celebrate with you when you get blessed. But can you celebrate with people? I find a lot in, 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 in not just this group, but in, in many groups, uh, among singers. They want everybody to get with them, but when, when somebody else is up ministering, they'll just sit there and they won't say a word. Mm, she missed that note. She could have held that a little longer. Your breathing is off. When that's the place where you should be praying, Lord, help our minister until folk get blessed and, 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 and yokes get broken and, and, and they get released to a better place. That's what you want to do when somebody is up ministering. You want the yokes to get broken off. You want somebody to get delivered. You want somebody to get set free. That's why you, I don't know why we, when the praise team and the worship team is up, you should be ready to, to just move with them because you want somebody to get free. They're not entertaining you. You're not here to entertain me. You're here to help get somebody breakthrough. Come on, come on. I'm, 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 I'm here to help. I'm going to help her work this thing out. If I had to get up and go to holler like I'm crazy, just sing it so you miss something. Sing it anyhow. Help somebody get free. Yeah. And when we learn to free each other, we'll get free. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Free somebody. Turn around this room and look at somebody and say, free somebody else. <laughs> Turn to them and say, so I'm going to rejoice with you when you're rejoicing. you're rejoicing. Amen. Give God a praise. I'm going to do that. I'm going to rejoice with you. We have such a competitive spirit in church that we can't even function well. And some of us can't even appreciate what we have in our church for looking into the window of another church. They doing that over there. Amen. What are you doing over here? Don't dare come to me and tell me what somebody else is doing. I'm going to look at you and it's not going to be pretty. 
going to ask you what you're doing. So, and it's always good to jump in somebody else's vineyard where a whole group of people have labored to get it there. And then you a Johnny come lately, you jump on the ship and everything. Oh, this is bad. This. But somebody had sweat and tears back there. When it was small, when it wasn't nothing, when nobody was noticing anybody. Whew. The question of inferiority is, why can't I do that? Proverbs 14 and 30. Yvonne. When you have it, say amen. It says, a sound heart is life to the body. You still looking for it? Team, come up and sing another song.
Turn again to Proverbs 14 and 30. And it says there, a sound heart is life to the body, but every, but envy is rottenness to the bone. It's rottenness. It'll destroy you. So you can't operate in it. Guinness has said, envy is self-destructive. Self-destructive. What the envier cannot enjoy, they don't want anybody else to enjoy. You can't have people around you that are envious of you. Because their attempt is to derail what God has in store for you. Because every time you start getting blessed, they have a problem with you. And then they start raising up little doubt areas about, is that God? That's the envier. Envy showed up as it relates to Paul and Silas. Because they were able to do something with the people. They motivated the people in joy and excitement to accept the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the group in the city at that time, which was a Jewish faction, and the, 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 the wicked men of the marketplace, that means that the Jewish fellows joined forces with some wicked people to come against Paul and Silas. Because they were envious of them and jealous of them. They were jealous that they were able to make people get excited about a brand new walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And people will get mad at you when you, 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 you want to live for Jesus because they can't manipulate you anymore. I had friends that I told that I was going to be a preacher, and they said, why you want to do that, Lou? I'm getting ready to lose my friend. I said, no, you're not. But what God was doing with me became an affront to your life, their life. Envious. And when they got to Jason's house, who's mentioned in our scripture, Jason had established a church. He was at the center of the church in Thessalonica, and they thought Paul and Silas were in his house. Well, when Paul and Silas weren't there, they still took them to jail anyway. So I want to tell you, you will get in trouble with, with the people of God that you hang out with. If they can't get them, they will come after you. And if they come after you, they still, they still got to get somebody. So they snatched Jason and some of his company and they took him to the mag before the magistrate. And the charge was, is that these people have turned the world upside down. They did it in other cities. Now they're here doing the same thing. And here is, when, when they can't get you exactly, they have to create a lie on you. And, they, and, and this was the lie that they said that they had, had at, uh, 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 and, and, that, and I'm paraphrasing, they do not honor Caesar. They have a, another king called Jesus. Well, that's a problem. Why is it a problem? Because it would bring the wrath of the Roman Empire down on Thessalonica to know that they were raising up another king in that city. It was a lie. How much damage is done by a liar? 
a lie. But God has a way of even helping you when they lie on you. And he'll get you out of trouble when they lie on you and bring the wrath down on you. Well, I'm going to read a little bit more. After they had attacked the house of Jason, the scripture says that, but I want to give you this. that they had turned the world upside down. Luke 13, 49 through 53. Let's see what Jesus came to do. Paul and Silas came to do the exact same thing. You've been called to do the exact same thing. When you have a say, amen. amen. And it said there, I came to send fire on the earth. And how, now this is Jesus talking. Luke 13, 49 through 53. Is that there? 12? It's 12, 49 through 53? Okay, I'm sorry. I came to send fire on the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled or had already started to burn. But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? This is Jesus talking. You think I can't. I know over in Isaiah they said he would be the prince of peace. But Jesus said, I'm going to tell you why I came. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all. Everybody say with me, not at all. But rather division. Come on. Jesus said, I came to, to separate Those from in the kingdom and those from without. He said, I didn't come to join forces with you. Can we all get along? He said, I came to divide. Because it's only in the division that people can get into the kingdom. And you can't be in and out at the same time. You either hot or cold because if you're not, he'll spew you. He'll throw you up. Oh, God. And this is the age of great compromise where we want to be everything to everybody and it don't work. And then you find yourself on the outside in wondering why it didn't work, why it didn't happen, why I'm not, I'm not getting the victory. Well, I'm asking you a question, where are you standing? For from now on, five in one house will be divided. Three against two. And two against three. Anybody had that kind of division in your house? Excuse me, I got to take my shoes off now. See, God is saying that if you don't line up with me, you're going to be divided even in your own house. Don't think it's strange. It's the word of the Lord. Come on, come on. And some of you already experienced it. I know you want to say, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. But God, sometimes there is somebody in that house that has said everything except I'm going to serve the Lord you serve. Then it said there, father will be divided against son. And son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother. And just in case you, you, you think that's not to the extent of family, it's say mother-in-law. <laughs> 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 
Are, are y'all out there? Mama in love or mama in like, whichever one she is. Her daughter-in-law and her daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Don't think it's strange when you can't get it moving the way you need. Because Jesus said, I came to divide. And if you don't come on board with me, you'll be divided out of me. Don't think it's strange. It's what I came to do. Just when you thought I was coming to be the Prince of Peace, I've come to set you at odds with you. You know, that, that scripture set me on edge. Because we want everybody, there's, there's, there's a, a, a children's program, and, and, and what is it where it says, everybody line up, line up, line up, everybody line up. What is it? Bubble guppies. When, when they on their way into school, the teacher say, everybody line up, line up, line up, line up. But everybody don't want to line up. And in that case, that's when the Lord said, it's not them that's dividing. It's not their choice. It's me that's doing it. So I want you all to get comfortable when the division comes. I know we all want our kids to be saved, but if they make a choice against what's of the kingdom, Jesus said, I'm the one that's dividing. Holy Ghost. And you're striving because you're trying to make something happen, but Jesus is the only one that can save them. Mama and Papa, you can't save them. And if, he, and if he don't save them, they won't be saved. Tell them I want you to be saved. I want you to come into the kingdom. But, but I can't make you be saved. But what you do do is keep praying. Keep believing. Keep trusting God. And landing in the scripture where it said, when they get old, they won't depart from you. They won't depart from it. They won't depart from the faith. They might stray, but they won't depart. Believe for. But when division comes, don't start acting crazy. Sitting up moaning and grieving. My kids, my kids, my kids. It's Jesus that's doing it. Woo! Did this mess with somebody today? Amen. Come on, come on. It, it'll mess with you. You cry and you weep over them and you want them to be all right. But they have made it in their heart that I don't want to do it this way. And so, so you trust in God. You've begged. You, you, let Jesus be the divider because he's the only one that can be their savior. Yeah. <laughs> At the close of the day, the Bible says every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. If they don't bow now, they will bow later. That Jesus is Lord of all to the glory of God. They, they go bow and they play good games like they in, but they out. They'll tell you they going to church, but they not. They tell you they serving the Lord, but they not. And you don't have to buy into it. Just saying, Jesus, you're dividing. My goodness, Jesus. Jesus turned the world upside down. Then I have another one. Luke 12, 16 through 21. Look there, I want to make sure it's the right. Do you have it? Amen. Does it say, then he spoke? Amen. Yeah. He said here, then he spoke a parable to them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man yielded 
What is the next word? That means it brought forth great crop. And he thought, who is he? The rich man. He thought within himself saying, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? Do you all see that? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, this fella talked to himself a lot. <laughs> I will say to my soul, soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, come on, everybody say, but God said. Now you can say what you want to yourself and that's only until God says something. Because sometimes the ways of a man, he, it seems right. But the end is destruction. It's not right. So, so, and God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? Yeah. Fool! You built new barns to hold all your excess. <clears throat> Build new buildings to hold all your excess. He sat there. He said, you're a fool. He said, you, so you, you're going to take your ease and you're going to rest. You won't be able to do it because this night... You're not going to live. You're going to die. Whew. Then those whose will those things be, you have provided. Who, 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 who's going to get your stuff? That you hoarded and laid up. Who's going to get it? It's usually the person you don't want to get it to get it. Acts 17, 9 through 10. Let's go back to Jason and we see something else happening. I intend to finish. I talked about finishing last week and I'm going to finish. Now, this is after they had gotten arrested. And I'll be finished in just a, a minute. The Bible here says something interesting. It says, so when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they had taken security from Jason and the rest, that mean they they took they took a a a a, 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 a payoff from them. When they took the money from them, they let them go, and Jason paid it. Why did he pay the money? When they were right, they hadn't done anything wrong. They were just preaching Jesus. They, had, they didn't incite anybody. They, were, they really made people excited. They made people happy to receive Jesus. What is it that they were covering? And I want to say to you, they paid the money so that the wrath of Rome would not come down on Thessalonica. Which means sometime you have to give up the right For the wrong. You're not wrong, but you got to suffer it to be so. 
Because you see the bigger picture. No, they are you ready for this. Y'all see the greater picture. That if I don't operate this, something down the road is going to be uh, 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 affected some way or another. So, no, you didn't do anything wrong. I'm going to go on and pay this money to them so that the city can be safe. You must give up the right for the wrong. Oh, did, did y'all get that today? That blessed me because sometimes we, we think we need to hold our point. But you're losing ground holding the point. You need to see the big picture. Yes, yes. I know it ain't right, but I'm taking care of something. Yes, yes, yes. I know I didn't do anything wrong. See, see, sometimes you apologize when you're not wrong. Sometimes you go on and deal with the situation when you're not wrong because you see the bigger picture. That the enemy wants to destroy something greater than yourself. And that church would have been in jeopardy. So Pastor Jason paid the money. I'm not wrong. But I'm going to keep them safe. Blessings to you today. Turn it right side up. Inside out. Turn it around. You've been called to transform lives. Shake up something. In Jesus' name. Lift hands and begin to worship. Give up some stuff. Give up some stuff. Give up some stuff. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's some parent out there that said, God, I've been really going through. (laughs) You keep doing right even when it's been wrong to you. Because it's a seed too. Stop warring with them. Stop. Just. Because a larger picture is you want it to be safe. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you for this day. We even thank you for the interruption. That we will strengthen to go back. You tell us in the word, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But you heal us out of every one of them. You deliver us out of every one of them. And so we thank you. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together and give them a good prayer. be a good spot to do communion right now. Jeez. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org, forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. 
การตัวแอสซีล